Go Greendale, go Greendale, go. Go Greendale. That gets my goat, really? That was lame even for you. And that really is saying something. Oh, wow. It's hard to believe that we're over 30. <laughs> Not me, sir. <laughs> hey, everybody. This is Rich Outfield. <laughs> smells in here. <laughs> I, I, I can't imagine why. <sighs> this is Big Angle Rich. Oh, welcome to That Gets My Goat. A very special smell rama episode of That Gets My Goat. <laughs> I, hopefully you have your scratch and sniff card in front of you. Oh, yeah. It's but... so scratch number two right now. <laughs> That's right. It's the brown one. Um, it sounds like you have something that you wanted to talk about. So important that we had to drop what we were going to do, <laughs> and we're going to do this instead. Oh, it wasn't important. It's just that I actually remembered it, which I thought was surprising. And you know what gets my goat? Every week, I have ideas of things that we should talk about. Or you and I have a joke, and he's like, hey, let's tell that joke on the show. That'll be really funny. Even Clay Duggar will laugh. And by the time we get together to record it, no idea. No memory of what it was. All I know is that it was really, really funny. It was Duggar-centric. It was just, oh, <laughs> darn it. And it's gone. Yeah, it's funny. There's a podcasting community like group on Facebook. And one of the early posts that they did on there was, you know you're a podcaster when dot 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 and then they want people to comment and say you do this you do that you do whatever no one will sleep with you there you go yes <laughs> that was the first answer and the second and the third and it wasn't until the 10th when they finally got something other than that no I, I one of the things that i saw that somebody put on there was that you carry a notebook around with you so you can write ideas down about what you want to say on your podcast I think maybe we uh, ought to learn a lesson from that and start doing that. Because then that one thing that we came up with at the They Might Be Giants concert as we were walking out, I wouldn't still be asking you, what was that? You still haven't remembered? Yeah, I wanted to do a fake commercial for our Christmas episode. I wrote it down on the drive to Comic-Con in July, and I've never mentioned it to you again. And oh. of course we didn't record it. It's not going to be no, a we Christmas didn't. episode. <laughs> well, there's always next year. Well, well it, it works just as well, if not better, for Valentine's Day. Oh, so. okay. There you go. But uh, you've got to remind me. Well, it, Just like it, that it, movie, it, Valentine's Day and New Year's Eve, it worked just as well, if not better, as Valentine's Day. If anybody actually listens to this show, you will feel free to remind me to put in that fake commercial for our Valentine's Day episode. So anyways, the thing that I was talking about, and I was thinking about talking about, and I remembered because you mentioned it, and it seems like maybe you might have a bit of a bone to pick with it as well. Right now it's mid-December, and I'm sure by the time the episode actually comes out, it'll be mid to late January or so. Well, if you want, I can bump this up to be our oh, next okay. episode. Maybe we could do that. Do you want me to? It is sort of Christmas-centric, I guess, because okay. we're talking about Christmas commercials. But there's these Christmas commercials that you see all the time. You see them every single year. It's not, it usually seems like more than just a few brands of cars will do this commercial. They do the commercial where, you know, they bring the person out, you know, I don't know what it is. They have their eyes closed or whatever. And they're like, okay, look. And they open their eyes and they've got this Lexus or whatever sitting on their driveway with a gigantic bow on top of it. It's like, yay, and it's Christmas time and you can buy a Lexus for Christmas. I have never in my entire life knowing a single person that would buy somebody a car as a present. Hey, it's Christmas. You want a car? Um, Lexis are high-end cars, yes, though, right? Yes, they for, are. For They're very wealthy luxury people. cars. Okay, so, so maybe the kind of guy who would buy his daughter a present for her 16th birthday <laughs> would be able to buy a Lexus, right? I guess, but yeah, I don't know. So the thing that I was thinking is when you make it, when you put a commercial on TV – you are trying to get the people that would buy your product to see that commercial. So that's why, like, football games, you see tons of truck commercials and tons of beer commercials, stuff like that. But the weird thing is, also during football games, you see these damned Lexus commercials. Are the guys that are sitting in their freaking trailer or basement or whatever maybe it's not a trailer i don't watch football on the trailer so i suppose they're not all trailer guys it's not but a trailer are these guys gonna be like, oh yeah good idea i should buy a car and you know if somebody really did that they need to have a commercial where 
they go out there and they're like, okay, honey, open your eyes. And she goes, you bought me an boop car. Where do you think we're going to get the money for that? Okay, now we have to sell the house. That's great. Thanks for the car. But we can't make our payments anymore. You beep. They actually have a commercial. You know that dude uh, that did the voice? He was like the dumb boyfriend on Seinfeld of Elaine's for a while. And then he did the voice for Kronk, I believe, on Emperor's New Groove. And since then, he's become like just the voice of every dumb cartoon character there is. Yeah, usually I know what his name is because I fudge and hate him. <laughs> um, what is his name? I'm not sure what his name is. I figured I would just ask you and you would tell me and his I, name. I, no, I so should know. Yeah, that's he, the way we usually do this. <laughs> so you're really throwing it. Well, his character and his name you, was, you ruined was, my groove here. But anyways, you know the guy. He's just like, oh, yeah, huh. really dumb. Doesn't quite sound as much like Butthead as I did there. But uh he does these Toyota commercials now where they, they actually start out that way where he's like, he's like, are you a millionaire? No? Yeah, then you're probably not buying somebody a car for Christmas. And then he goes on to talk about why the Toyota car is the kind of car that you should get and it's not the kind of car that millionaires buy for Christmas. And then he goes, but I'm doing pretty good so this one here is for my niece or something like that i don't remember exactly how it ends but yeah i actually appreciated them uh throwing that in their face and they have the lexus commercials this year which i think is even worse where they have like the people are like do and they're somehow they're supposedly using this song that goes with the commercial this is now how they're getting the women to realize oh i'm getting a lexus for christmas now They'll be sitting there and they're like playing rock band or something. And then all of a sudden they realize they're playing the Lexus December to Remember theme song on the guitar. And they're like, what? And they run outside and see that there's a car with a big uh, bow on it. But rock band doesn't it. actually play music. True. And nobody knows the song to the Lexus commercial. I don't think they even used this song last year in their commercials. <laughs> much less for years and years enough for people to actually recognize hey that's the lexus december to remember song it's not even a catchy song for that matter it's just stupid it irritates me those songs to no end are those songs those commercials do they irritate you no i actually don't know the commercials oh you douche you know it's funny because just moments before you arrived here i was looking at facebook and I want to say Kevin Anderson linked to a parody Lexus commercial. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where they bring the woman out and they show her the car and they're like, Lexus, December to remember. It's heartwarming and wonderful or whatever. And they're like, okay, you can open your eyes. And she opens her eyes and she sees the Lexus with the bow on top and the guy's standing there. And she goes, ah! And she runs and she grabs the bow off the top and then takes the bow and runs away with it. And she's all happy and they're like, um, and then they go inside and she's like putting the bow in front of herself like it's a dress or something and like looking at herself in the mirror. And then the daughter says to the dad, does this mean mom has to go back to the hospital? <laughs> and the dad says, yes. Yes, it does. And then they're driving in the car, going to the hospital. And the lady's just like in the back going, oh, I'm tripping out back here. This is great. And they're all just sad. It's just like the Lexus December to Remember event going on now. Where do these commercials come from, the, the parody commercials? I think it's just like when you see something on Funny or Die or College Humor or something. Where does the money for that come from? Who? How do these things happen? I think a lot of that, like Funny or Die and stuff like that, they actually make those movies that they show. Right. And they use the money that they make from their website to keep producing them and stuff. It's like your uh, movie Bob guy or what was the guy that you were – this guy's site that has tons of people that provide like your nostalgia girl and all that. Those That's, are all uh, – That guy with the glasses. That Yeah, that guy with the glasses. I mean he's bringing in money by the truckload yeah. apparently by way of his website. And he makes these shows that he puts on there. And I think that's the same kind of a thing. Why can't we get in on that? Why can't this podcasting community that we're part of on Facebook <laughs> generate money? <laughs> I think really the big problem is we have no idea how to generate money. 
I bet there's ways to do it. We could probably do it with what we do if we had a clue. Patrick Warburton. Oh, look at you. You know where I pulled that? Your ass. Smell it. <laughs> That's where I've been keeping my Patrick Warburton, by the way. Good. I just good. hate that guy's voice. I hate him. Oh, hate. I'm using the word hate here. I don't feel that way. I mean, I don't love him or anything, but I, he's humorous at times, I've thought. What were you saying before Patrick Warburton ruined our conversation? I was just talking about how we have no clue how to uh, make money, and that's the reason why we don't make money. Yeah, but they probably have a team of people, and some of those people are creative. Right. And the other people are financially yeah, savvy. The, the business guys, yeah, and you know. connected instead. I actually thought about that. I, I assume that sooner or later, like it happens to everybody eventually, the career that you're working at suddenly dries up. You get fired. You get laid off when you're 45 or whatever. And now you have to start your life over. I assume that'll probably happen to me about the time that I'm 45. And I'll have to go back to school and get a business degree is what I was thinking. And I'm going to be riding your tail like a one of those little bird that rides the tail of a rhinoceros. Oh, okay. If I ever do have to go back to school business degree so that i have an idea as to how to take an idea and turn it into money because that's one thing that i just don't understand i know how to take money and waste it on ideas <laughs> so do i <laughs> but like okay the transformers movie that we shot in the summer and still hasn't been done uh, if yeah. there was a dollar amount attached to oh that, you had to bring that up no no i'm just saying <laughs> we do this in our spare time we do it in the middle of the freaking night. And sometimes it's a chore. Sometimes it's really difficult. Like last week, we couldn't get together on our regular night. We had to get together on like the one night that you had free after working a full day at work and all that stuff. I think we got together early at like eight o'clock at night and went till four in the freaking... Well, I didn't get home until after four. So I don't yeah, know it was four. Of, I yeah. didn't get into bed if, until four and you left my house. I turned and walked and got into bed basically. And I was still... Not in bed until four, so. But I'm just saying, this is something we do for the love of the game. Oh, for the love of... Of Peter, yes. But if there were a paycheck at the end of this, there's some motivation. There's some... He's like, okay, you know, what would we achieve if there was some kind of financial reward for this? And who knows? It would become more of a priority. And plus, you'd be able to hold it up and say, I know it annoys you that we're yelling in foreign tongues in the middle of the night, but look at this paycheck we got from it. Right. Yeah, I'm sure there's a way. Where, where there's, there's a whip. Yes, where there's a whip, there's a way. Maybe that's what we need is a whip. I agree. <laughs> but I'm probably right. thinking of a completely different scenario than you are. <laughs> um, was that it? Just the, the Lexus commercial? You don't like the Lexus commercials? I don't like those. They're just so pretentious and irritating. And why do they show them when 99% of the people that are watching them cannot afford to do something like that? Well, it's ironic and, that you would use 99%. Because oh, it's go. the 1% that... Uh, but 1% aren't watching football games. They're like papering their walls with money and like rolling in it and is it because is football a lowbrow activity is it i no, probably not anymore i mean the tickets and stuff like that have gotten so expensive i'm sure you go to the super bowl and you'll probably see nothing but ceos and politicians and people that run ponzi schemes and stuff like that in the crowd but these are regular guys who work their way up some kind of Ladder and uh, possible or not? I mean, the blue blood person with a, a a Roman numeral in their name and all that. That's like, oh, we have a place in the Hamptons. We wouldn't let colored people in. They aren't going to be watching football. I, I would assume not, but maybe they would. I guess it's possible. It's, football has always kind of been considered the Bubba is watching it in his trailer. Or, you know, the guy that's missing a few teeth. Worse so even than hockey, I would say, you know. The cockfighting of the sporting world. There you go. Wait, cockfighting is a sport, though, isn't it? Or does that count? See, this is why I don't talk of sports, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, I think it's always been kind of known to be the dumb guys, the ones that watch it. That's why I'm always there on the couch every every Sunday tuning in. And that's why you're all like, I don't like football. I'm too good for it. 
That, that is remarkably a good impression of my mental process, but perhaps we should uh, go back to what we were actually supposed to be recording right now. Yeah, I guess we could do that. Maybe I'll make that a separate recording. We'll go ahead and stop this one and start again. Okay, that works. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm Rich Outfield. Get ready for the Podcastle story. It's coming. We're recording it next, but it won't be ever on any of our feeds. So check it out there. I'm Big Ankovich. See you later, folks. Bye. Thank you for listening. That Gets My Goat. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons license. Why am I telling you this? Evil Troy and Evil Abed. Ferret Steinmetz. <laughs>